Welcome back. You're watching News Across Nigeria. And just before we continue, we'd like to remind you that all our top stories can be found on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Please visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. We'd also like to urge you to please interact with the Eyewitness feature in the Channels TV app on the Android, iOS, and Windows platforms. If you have pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, tap the app on your device. Swipe to reveal the Eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Before we took our quick recess on news across Nigeria, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon had embarked on a visit to the country and in Abuja, the nation's capital, where he was, he was meeting with leaders of the business community as well as philanthropists. Well, before that, he actually paid a visit to the bomb explosion scene carried out at the UN building in Abuja to lay a wreath. It happened four years ago, that is the explosion uh, that was uh, chanced or, or caused by members of the terror group Boko Haram. Mr. Ban Ki-moon arrived in Nigeria yesterday for the two-day visit and he urged workers not to be deterred by the tragedy but to continue to work for the advancement of humanity. A suicide bomber had on August the 26, 2011 rammed a car laden with bombs through security barricades into the UN building resulting in the blast that ripped through the structure, killing over 20 people and wounding over 70 others. The blast caused massive devastation to parts of the building, which is the headquarters of the global body in Nigeria and providing offices for hundreds of employees working for various organs of the organization. Colleagues and partners will be remembered this morning with the moments of silence in many places, but nowhere are the memories of these colleagues more immediate, more vivid, and more compelling than here in Abuja. We will remember them forever as truly the best of humanity. We join the families in prayers for the eternal rest of the souls of the departed and for long and healthy lives of, for the injured uh, survivors. I'm going to meet uh, some of the colleagues who were injured uh, this evening. We also recognize the extraordinary fortitude and determination of the survivors, many of whom suffered terrible injury and trauma. I commend them for the courage that they continue to show in healing and in working for a better world. I want to thank the government of Nigeria for its commitment to rebuild the United Nations House as a symbol of the resilience of our extraordinary cooperation. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon now to other news that is affecting Nigerian states across the country, and this time to the northeastern part of the nation. Internally displaced camps in Adamawa states have continued to receive visitors with relief materials, the latest being a non-governmental organization uh, which is providing relief for internally displaced women with the objective of making them independent after life at the camps. The organization was at the IDP camp in Yola, where 50 women benefited from a facility which will be expanded in addition to training to be provided for skills acquisition in the first phase of the program. Take a look. Women who have lost their husbands to attacks and those who can assist their spouses whose livelihood have been affected by the crisis are the target group. Well, Matter Empowerment Initiative says 
it is committed to the independence of women financially or otherwise and has established a revolving loan for them. The leader of the group, Barista Sharon Ikeazo, told the women at the camp that the money given to them is not free, but is to help them begin life again. We are establishing friendship and sisterhood today. Women must help women. Some of the women who benefited from this first phase of the revolving loan load the initiative and promise to abide by the conditions laid down for repayment. I'm thank God. So even picking no well, I'm carrying and go as pity. Even school. This game I have seen for inside this money. Now I go carry help my picking. The purpose of this meeting today is to give the women back their dignity, the internally displaced women, giving them back their, their dignity through financial independence. So we're just giving them revolving loans, form them into groups whereby they will continue with their petty trading, which they've been doing, even when they go back to their states or their villages when they're liberated. They will continue with the businesses, form cooperatives, and we help other women as well. These loans, if properly utilized, will help such families reintegrate into the society once peace returns to their communities. And just to show you some, or remind you of some interesting facts about Adamawa State, from where that story came, it's in the northeastern part of the country it was created in 1991, called the Land of Beauty, and some used to call it the Sunshine State, but it has always shared its border with the Republic of Cameroon to the east, as well as a number of natural resources, very numerous to mention, some of which, this is not all, just some, platinum, mercury, iron ore. Did you know that Adamawa State has deposits of uranium, tin, coal, marble, zinc, just some of the reasons why the state government is clamoring for foreign direct investment there. Agricultural food crops such as maize, yam, cassava, guinea corn, millet, rice. Also, Adamawa happens to be one of the largest states in the country. And the man at the helm of affairs is Admiral Mochala Inyako. Still to come on news across Nigeria, we're going to stay in the northern region and we'll look at the recent phenomena of cattle rustling.